Hi, I'm Micah Bell, and this is Deliverance Talk. It seems incredulous to a lot of people that a person could have demons inside them. It didn't seem that way to Jesus when he came casting demons out of his people. There are some that would say, no, they're not in people, they're on people, or they come to the outside of people. But no. Uh, they're inside people because the word there is they were cast out. Ekbalo is a Greek word. And so, uh, as incredulous as it seems, people have demons. In fact, I think every single living soul on the face of the earth has demons inside them until it's dealt with. And especially Christians. So Jesus came casting demons out of the sheep of the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, out of his people, which in essence would be, like today, out of Christians, like some of us. So I know personally, from my experience, when I discovered this and began to have somebody pray with me, even praying for myself, I realized that there were things in me that had been there all of my life up to that point that were not, a, were not of me but they were influencing me in my life, in my character, in my personality, in the way I talked and what I said, what I thought, and so forth. And I think one of the reasons is that so many people don't see this is that they don't understand how God made us. Now, I know there are teachings that say that we are a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, but I don't see the Bible teaching it that way. As I recall, when God made man there in the Garden of Eden that he breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. And so it seems that the Bible also says that we have a spirit, soul, and body and that that is the part of us that makes up our personality, who I am. My mind, my will, my emotions make up a great part of my personality. And so, who am I? I'm somebody unique and distinct. All of us don't look the same. There are identical twins, I understand. But no two of us are exactly alike. And that's amazing, considering all the millions and millions of people on the face of the earth that have come and gone. So we're distinct, and we're always going to be distinct. We're going to know each other. We say uh, in the future, in heaven or in the spiritual realm, wherever, the, wherever you believe. Uh, why? Because of our personality. So the Lord came to save our soul, to save who we are. But one of the problems that we have with demons that come into us is the fact that we lose understanding of who we are and we don't even know who, what we would call the real self is. I remember how I used to say, and I've heard many people say, still hear people say, I really don't know who I am. Huh. Well, first of all, going back to this idea that we are a soul, that we have a spirit, because it says in Proverbs that the spirit of a man is like the candle of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts. And so it's the spirit of a man. We have a spirit, spirit man, but we are a soul, and so shall we ever be. And we also have a body that our soul and spirit man dwells within. But God made us uniquely. He made us where we could contain spirit. How can we contain the Holy Spirit? God made us that way to contain spirits, but the problem is, is that we can contain any spirit. And if we don't know any better, if we aren't covered and so forth, even in the womb by misunderstanding, then other spirits can come within us. Why did God make us to be, to contain spirits? So we can worship. Because we can only worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So I need to be enhanced by the Holy Spirit 
within me to be able to even worship God the Father. So there's the problem. People don't understand how we're made, but we are spirit containers. In other words, the, the word says that we are vessels, and vessels contain things. And the big thing that we can contain so well is spirit. And again, I say <laughs> the problem is that uh, we can contain even unclean evil spirits, and certainly all of us have to deal with that. Evidently, the Lord made it to be that way. So, what does that mean? That means that we need understanding. In fact, it says in Isaiah 5.13 that my people perish for lack of knowledge. It also says it in Hosea 4.6 that people perish for the lack of knowledge. Now, why would that be? Because Paul also says uh, there in 2 Corinthians, he said, we know our enemy's devices. He's talking about forgiveness there in that passage. And he says, you know, if we don't forgive, then we know the devices of the enemy. And, and I'll not get on that in this deliverance talk because we've talked the last time about forgiveness and how important it is. That if we don't forgive, we open the door for the tormentors, as Jesus said in Matthew 13. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I think it's Matthew 18. So, uh, to know the enemy and, and not be ignorant of his schemes and devices because he has schemes, he has devices to get into us. And, of course, the big thing is, is the door of, of, of unclean spirits coming in us is sin and our own sin. But then, of course, there's also ancestral things that we've inherited and these are all things of the spirit realm. These, how, these are demons. How do things pass from one generation to another? It's certainly not by physical context, so to speak, but we, think, we say that things run in the family, and they certainly do, so we find problems running from generation to generation. We find different infirmities, diseases, sickness, we, we find divorce, we find poverty, and all of these things that run in a family. And what runs them, of course, is unclean spirits. Now, so the enemy comes, as he says, to steal, kill, destroy. The thief comes. The thief comes. And so uh, all of us have experienced setbacks and problems in our life. Maybe, maybe you're experiencing that right now and don't, don't understand what's going on. I must say that I was in a denomination, I was in a church that had no understanding whatsoever, taught me nothing about the spiritual realm, and not understanding the demons of rejection and fear and lust that I was dealing with and, and just was taught, you just pray, be good, uh, read your Bible, and you'll be okay. But I wasn't okay. <laughs> That's why I'm here with this deliverance talk, because I know a lot of people don't understand what's going on. Some do and don't know what to do about it. That's important, too. So we, we got a case in point. We got a case of, of Job. And so Satan comes to, to God, and, and there, there again is this thing about, well, uh, a Christian can't have a demon because a, a, a demon and the Holy Spirit can't be in the same place. Well, no, if Satan can go before God with the other sons of God, then certainly a, 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 an unclean spirit can be in the same area where the Holy Spirit is, and certainly he is, and that's why sometimes people are such a mixture and schizophrenic and all these things. We'll not go into that. So the enemy, uh, when given the right because of Job's sin of pride, a lot of people don't see that, but that was the big thing with Job. God said, well, okay, go. And so what's the first thing the enemy does? He goes and, and, and destroys his, his source of income, his cattle, his sheep. <laughs> they all get destroyed. And so Job gets the report, wow. And then boom, here he comes, and, and the house falls in on his children, and he loses all his children. Boom. Well, that didn't phase Job evidently at that point, so Satan goes back to 
before the throne of God and says, oh, let me at, let me at him. If I touch his, if I touch his body, uh, he, he, he'll leave you. The Lord says, okay, right, but not, you can't kill him. You can't take, you can't cause death. So there we find Job eaten up with boils and in misery and so forth and, and not understanding, but not cursing God like his wife asked, said, why don't you curse God and die? Well, Job wasn't about to do that because he was wise enough to know, I know there's a reason for this because I trust God and I'm going to find out what it is. Now, listen to me. If you're having these kinds of things, if your marriage is not good, if you're dealing with poverty, you're dealing with you can't get a job, you're dealing with uh, whatever, addictions and whatever, there's a reason, there's a reason. And like Job, just sit down and, and, and seek the Lord and say, Lord, show me what the reason is and find out how this thing got into my life because something got into your life as it has mine. Now, the problem is, like Job, he, had, he didn't have good counselors. And so if you go to some churches, if you go to some pastors, I know what they're going to tell you. Well, just pray. Just pray and read your Bible, and, and, and it, it'll go away. But it doesn't go away. And so Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. You can trample on serpents and scorpions, which are types of demons. And nothing should by any means hurt you. Okay, so if I'm being hurt, then I'm not seeing why, and I'm not taking the authority that's been given to me through the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death on the cross to break curses for us and so forth. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say to you, is that you understand how you're made. You're a spirit container. These things get in our life and they affect our life until we have a false personality. And I've seen people delivered of, of demons just like myself and their personality changes, their countenance changes, and it's just a wonderful thing to behold. The disease leaves their body, infirmities fall away, and these kinds of things because they have gotten rid of spirits within them that have caused these things to take place. And just like with Job, the Lord has allowed it to be so. So there comes repentance, finding out why. There comes then submission and humility to say, okay, I've been told this and told, you know, if anything affects my pride, our, our person's pride anymore, then to admit, I've got demons in me. And people in the ministry are the worst about this. If you're in the ministry, huh, but look at the New Testament. And look what Jesus did. More than a third of his ministry was dealing with this. So it must be important. It hasn't changed. So this is my plea. That, that you not be sitting there with lack of knowledge. But understanding how, what the spiritual realm is all about. How you're made and what's going on. And knowing the schemes and devices of the enemy that wants to destroy you. So the truth will make you free if you want it. Seek the truth. Hear me. Pray about this. I know it takes the Holy Spirit to open people's eyes after all these 40 years with this. But I tell you, it's the truth. And I pray that you be set free. And God bless you right now. Peace.